I'd like to call this regular meeting of the Rapsville City Commission to order. We have roll call, please. Mayor Sagata? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Schuster? Present. Commissioner Chavez? Present. Commissioner Giacomo? Present. Commissioner Chatterley, not present. Do y'all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> Thank you. I thank everyone for coming out tonight. A couple of announcements before we get started. We've got uh, notice of potential quorum of the city commissioners so that we may attend the 31st annual municipal day. It's going to be held in Santa Fe at the La Fonda Hotel. Uh, reception will be Thursday evening, February 6th at 5.30, and the Municipal Day session will be from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Friday the 7th. That will be in Santa Fe. Our next regular commission meeting will be Tuesday, February 11th, 2020, 6 p.m. right here in the offices. Reminder, city offices will be closed Monday, February 17th for President's Day, and that will Bring us now to a recognition. We're going to recognize Mr. Frank Mahana. And he was a recipient of the Lions Club International Melvin Jones Fellowship Award. Mayor we, We'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate you for your work at, with the Lions Club and recognize you for having received the Melvin Jones Fellowship. And um, I want everyone else to know that Frankie has very kindly allowed us to display his award in the city offices for a while. And here's his picture. So, Frankie is a very dedicated um, citizen of our town. And um, <laughs> Smile, Frank. Come on. <laughs> oh, you gotta get, you gotta get the hat on. That's right. Frankie, I want to thank you. You you do a lot for this community. We, we really appreciate everything you do. <laughs> okay, at this time we will take any comments from the general public. If, I would just remind you if you have anything that is in regards to anything during the action part of the meeting, hold your comments till then. But at this time, we will take any, any comments. Anyone wishing to address the commission right now? All righty, so now we will move on to item six committee reports from commissioners. Commissioner Giacomo. Dump over the service company, board of directors held a meeting on January 22nd, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. Election of officers for the RPS board. Board of directors. Board of directors for 2000 is held with the following results. President, the elected president is Stephen Curry, Vice President Frank Perry, Treasurer David Swanson, and Secretary Jessica Gonzalez. Office manager and bookkeeper Jeff Spencer Gonzalez presented to the Board of Financial and Statistical Information for November and December, which were all approved by the Board. Resolution 2020-1, meeting notifications requirements was observed and approved by the, was discussed and approved by the Board. 
board members. General Manager Sandy Chapman stated that there were 383 new meters have been installed and all work in perfectly. Their goal is to be to install 300 meters per month. The Assistant the General Manager Dave Pacino updated the board on the work being performed by the RPS crews. Next meeting was the Arthur Johnson Memorial Library Board meeting was held on January 1st, 21st, 2020, 5.30 p.m. On January 15th, the library received a check in the amount of $9,403.85 for the state grant in aid and the 2018 blue bond grant, which well, was received for a few months to date. The library is launching a new we once in once a month at six o'clock meeting night on the last Thursday of each month. The purpose of this this aim is to be drawing more adults into the program. Bruce Dietrich, who is working locally with the federal census, is in Haiti, New Mexico. Will be holding a program a library for those who are interested in working as a census taker in this area. Uh, statistical report for November. Donations received were zero. Fines collected $208.66. Six copies made were $571.59. Materials, memorials received were zero. Programs held at the library were nine attended by 24 individuals. Story hours held at the library were four attended by 14. Statistical information for December was the fall. Donations received was zero. Fines collected was eighty-five dollars. Copies made was six hundred twenty-three dollars and thirty cents. Memorial received was zero. Programs held at the library was nine, attended by twenty-three individuals. Story hours held at the library was three, attended by twenty-one. That's all I have this man. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Mr. Chavez. I do. Uh, Myself and Mayor Pro Tem Schuster attended the water board meeting January 21st. We considered and acted on the open meetings resolution. We approved the water treatment chemical bids for the water department. Lake Maloya is slowly rising. It's approximately three feet below the spillway. And currently we're pumping all our water from Cimarron. Uh, we received a copy of the 40 year plan. Now that's, a, that's the plan that we have to present to the state and to show that the 40-year plan of the water, she's holding a, a copy of it right now. It's weather, rather large and it's good for you going to sleep at night if you have something to read. The filter plant and lift station are progressing on schedule. And uh, the water the water department crew replaced a huge leak on the Cimarron line near I-25 north of Hereford. This was causing a lot of problems and they got that one complete. Uh, and we approve the budget adjustments and financial reports for 2019. Uh, do you have anything to add, Mayor? Nope. Thank you. That's all I have. Yes, sir. Mayor Pro Tem. All right. Um, I also attended on January 21st at noon the Housing Authority Board, and they uh, reviewed utility allowance calendar for 2020 and adopted it through Resolution 561. Uh, they also reviewed flat rents for the calendar year of 2020 and adopted it through Resolution 562. They have 21 units with new bathrooms and other um, bathroom work and uh, certain door repairs continue to continue on. Um, and they're, they <clears throat> I think they've abated at least four apartments that had mold. Um, the Center for Community um, Innovation is uh, working hard on uh, cre uh, getting the Supercross uh, track up and running and uh, starting races, is that correct? Um, and the first uh, race, will it be a race on July 11th? Jeff is in the audience, so that's who I'm checking with. <laughs> and they also have five students working on their GEDs and then the third job uh, for progress program is out of um, the county building and is 
at least temporarily um, um, being housed uh, at the community center for community innovation. And um, Jeff, unless you have more, is there anything else? Okay. Much. okay. Where's, where's the track located? At? So the Supercross track is going to be moved into the Jim Young Rodeo Arena. Oh, okay. So we're going to expand the arena, get some new lighting, and um, make that the place. And so there's going to be also a new rodeo coming in in June, and then this race will be sandwiched in between the balloons and the, the run to return. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that's a sanctioned race, so it's a points race that should bring a lot of folks into town. Cool. Right on. It's a good event. Yeah, good event. That's it. That's, That's all it. Okay, as far as my uh, reports go, um, attended uh, the New Mexico Municipal League. We had a, a session, as you know, the legislative session began last week. We were down there for that. Uh, listened to the governor's state of the, the state address. She focused on a couple of things that she wants to see maybe accomplish this session being one overhaul of the state pension plan era to provide solvency. Of course, legalizing the recreational marijuana so to diversify New Mexico's economy. She'd like to see tougher penalties for human, drug, and gun trafficking and expanding the state police force by 60 officers. Also, uh, she wants to see free college for students and doing that in the form of uh, scholarships and increasing teacher pay. So as you can see, she's got some items there she'd like to push through. I know they started hearings on the red flag today, so that was interesting. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's a short session, um, healthy agenda. We'll see what happens. Uh, Lori's not here, so I'll, I'll give an abbreviated senior citizens uh, report. Basically, we've got uh, the new RFP has been released for the next two years. We will be applying to operate Raton, Simone, Springer, Moran, Wagamon with that. However, we did not receive any additional funding. It's going to be flatlined, which is basically 15% less than what we had. Well, three years ago, they, they took a 15% cut, and we're still at that level. And they want us to provide more services and not stop services, all while minimum wage is increasing. Uh, minimum wage, when it goes up in January 21, is going to cost me an additional $25,000 just in salaries. And I don't have any increased funding. So what that means is reduction of hours and staff and loss of services. So hopefully we can get together and do something like that. That's what it is. And that's all I have. So, moving into the action items of the meeting, item 7A, approval of the January 14th, 2020 regular commission meeting minutes. I believe you all have had a copy and hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at them. <coughs> Make a motion to approve. I second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item B, presentation by Capital Ergonomics BizCorp LLC on hip processing operation. Mr. Barrett. Mayor Commission, I am very pleased to introduce the gentlemen that are present to talk about uh, this economic development opportunity for Raton. They have traveled uh, here tonight uh, from Albuquerque, the group. Uh, uh, we have uh, met with over really the past couple of months um, on the city side. Jason Phillips has been very involved in uh, in, in the uh, proposal that you'll hear tonight. Also, uh, Jessica Barfield, our economic development person, has worked intensively on this over uh, about the past week and a half. Um, she will report to you on uh, where we're at from an economic development uh, standpoint, um, what the city is doing. Um, but at this time, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Mr. Ben Romero. Ben, if you could come forward, introduce your group, and then sure. you, you, you all can uh, kind of hear what the uh, ideas that we've, we've been talking <laughs> about. And uh, I think 
pose any questions that you might have. But uh, Mr. Romero, I want to say th welcome to Rat Town for you and, and uh, all of your, your group and your company. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about the proposal that we're going to hear. And uh, I know the commission is looking forward to talking to you. So I'll make this real short. Mayor, Mayor Pro Champ, City Manager, and County Commissioners, thank you for allowing us to come before this board or before you all just to kind of share with you what we're thinking of doing. Our company's <coughs> called Capital Agronomics. I want to introduce one of the owners is Damian Thomas. His wife is the other owner, and the main person who calls the shots is my wife. She's our CFO, <laughs> and they couldn't have been here tonight, but uh, uh, they're here in spirit. And also we've got... Uh, one of our plant managers, Adrian, uh, wanted to share with you a little bit. We have been over a year. Well, let me let me go back a little bit. I want you to all understand that we're not from California. We're not from Texas. We're from New Mexico. Cool. I was born and raised in in uh, in uh, Belen. Damien was born and raised in Albuquerque. Leanne was born and raised in Albuquerque. My wife, of almost 50 years, was born and raised in Belen. So we're local folks. Uh, I went to school at mixed the military institute. Was there four years. It was a tough school, but uh, it made me the man I am today. But you know we won't go into too much detail with that. But we currently have a hemp processing plant in Trinidad. It's not marijuana. It's hemp, and we've been there almost over a year. The year before, in 2018, we grew two pivots, 240 acres of hemp in Springfield, uh, Colorado. And uh, if you ask me if I want to be a farmer again, I'm going to tell you right now, the answer is absolutely no. Whoever it farms and does farming, I give them so much credit. It's just unbelievable what farmers have to go through with Mother Nature. And, and I think to me, and a lot of them are heroes. It's just sad that a lot of them lose their farms because they have so many challenges. But uh, we farmed and then we decided to go into the processing. So today we process hemp uh, for farmers, brokers, and other businesses. Basically, what does that mean? It basically what it does is we've got equipment in Trinidad that we take the actual hemp, we process it to where we can take the actual flour and we take the, the actual seed and we take the sticks and stems and we separate it. For what purpose? Purposes whatever the farmer or the investor wants. If he wants to take it to extraction for oil for medicinal reasons, or if they're looking for other other marketable products. So basically, that's what we do. We've been doing this in Trinidad for about a year, and uh, uh, the partners got together and started talking about why don't we do it in New Mexico? Of course, in New Mexico it wasn't legal, so therefore we, you know, it was legal in in uh, Colorado. We had to get something going because of the road that we had in Springfield. So we had to have somebody clean our stuff, so we couldn't find anybody. So we said, let's open up a plant. So I don't know if, any, if everybody's familiar with Topar. They're in Trinidad. And we rent the, the uh, uh, dealership that was there. We've been there almost over a year, and that's where our processing plant is. Um, we are currently uh, thinking about moving to another location, and we're considering Raton. Um, I have to tell you, uh, your folks have been very open and have been, I don't want to use the word charming, but they've been really terrific <laughs> about treating us like real business people. Um, Scott has been terrific. Jay, where's Jason? Jason, oh, this lady here, you guys have a jewel here. Absolutely. She is terrific. And what I like about her is she's going to tell you, is it worth bringing somebody into Raton? Is it a good fit? If it's not a good fit, so she's been very supportive of what we're doing. So uh, we're not made a final decision. I just got to tell you that Raton is 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 a place I think we'd like to come. Uh, we've worked hard in putting together some data, some numbers. Uh, uh, Scott has introduced us to a facility that you have here that possibly can work for us. Uh, let's not say possible. I think. What do you think, uh, uh, Adrian? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's something that we're strongly considering. So uh, I would like you to consider possibly uh, approving when we get further down the road and we get all the details through the economic development folks in, in Santa Fe and we get everything working together with Jessica, get everything we need to put together. 
then we'll present that to you. And hopefully, uh, if we do make a decision to move here, that you would accept us and okay possibly the move. If you have any questions, I'm open to questions. Damien, he can answer any questions uh, about us. Uh, you do have to know those that we ha we've been a company since 2003 and we've got a company, it's a telecommunication company that we've been in operation, very successful in New Mexico. So our roots are here. Uh, I had 32 years with US West, please don't throw anything at me, but uh, I was here and, and had this whole, had the state when the racetrack was, was running. So it was uh, pretty, pretty exciting back then. I wish you guys still had the racetrack. Absolutely. But uh, so we, I just, I tell you these things so I don't want you to think that we're just a fly by night company. We've been successful in what we're doing. And I'll just leave with you that we are considering coming to Red Hill. Mr. Romero, I want to thank you for making the trip up here. And, and we are excited as a community and as a commission. And uh, we look forward to, to furthering this partnership with you all. Appreciate that. We're hoping that the market continues and we're trying to grow the market so we can sustain and that's a bit with hemp it's really difficult hemp is up sure. and down and and i think that uh, i've spoken to the governor before she was governor and she was very pro hemp uh she can tell you a little bit about her the topicals that she puts on that with her arthritis and what that's done for her so uh, i think we're going to get a lot of support from her but i just want to make sure for the people that are here that we are not processing marijuana Absolutely. We, we, we're not into that business. I'm not saying anything bad about it, but we it's a separate business and Damien and I and Leanne and, and Annabelle are very excited about what we're doing. Cool. Any questions for Mr. Romero before? Mm -hmm. Mr. Romero, initially, how many employees will you? Will we'll start you? off with nine. With nine? And we're looking at, if, if this grows, now again, I, I want the commissioners and everybody here to understand is that the, the market is very volatile right now. Uh, we are struggling a little bit right now because in order to get enough product to be able to sustain ourselves. So we're working through that. But right now we're looking at nine and we anticipate, and I want to be conservative because I don't want to overcommit, is that within the next three years, I think we can get that up to 20. Now Damien's got some opportunities to do some other things with, with the facility that we're hoping could come to fruition. But uh, right now we've, we've provided uh, Jessica with that information and we're looking at bringing nine over to start off with and hopefully we can grow it to 20. So I'd like to grow it to 50 if the market will sustain it. Sure. So then why don't you tell them the average rate? Oh, yes, that's the other thing I think we're, we're very proud of is that I'm not, we're not paying minimum wage. We, we just, we just from the very beginning, even when we were out in the fields pulling pigweed, when we had more pigweed than we had hemp, <laughs> and it was a real challenge. Uh, we pay our people uh, starting off at $15 an hour. We pay our, our, our uh, managers $25 an hour, and then we're getting ready. We have a couple of people really into quality control. We're, we're going to have a quality control person that's going to make sure that, that the material that's processed is not contaminated because there's a lot of contamination out there today, and it doesn't have heavy metals. So that person will be making seventeen fifty an hour. So I think we're a little bit better than competitive, Sure. but uh, I'm glad you asked that question. <coughs> Appreciate yeah. it. Um, yeah. Sure. What? You think you're paying? Sure. So um, what intrigues us about the plant is the proximity to I-25 in Colorado. We all know that Colorado is the epicenter of hemp development as it stands today. You're getting new technologies that are coming out, you're getting new strains, you're getting a number of of business in an emerging market, business opportunities are coming out of Colorado. There is no closer community to Colorado than Raton. And when, when you have that I-25 structure, uh, it gives us the ability to alleviate some of the confusion that may occur from the 2018 Farm Bill being a commoditized crop, which is hemp, as long as it's below 0.3. So as long as we're, if, if we're taking control from that point of entry into New Mexico and we're educating law enforcement community uh, uh, members and the community itself, what it is that we're actually transporting, it starts there. So we see a lot of synergies there just by your proximity to Colorado. The other thing is hopefully, we, and this is, this is uh, one of the synergies that we see is we are in the process of validating and investigating new technology to bring to Raton. 
which will have high paying jobs in the area of fifty and sixty thousand dollars a piece uh, in the areas of extraction and integration into finished product. So we would like, uh, because of what your community has done for us and what you proposed for us, uh, or will propose for us, what's been outlined, we would like to uh, uh, take advantage of that as well. So we think that there's synergies with the, uh, uh, is it the it's not oil and gas, it's uh, uh, the, uh, the, the drillers that, no, the, the new federal guidelines in Colorado that are changed for, uh, uh, for drilling. Um, yeah, so, so you guys actually have a cross-pollination of expertise in this community uh, that can be used for what we're doing you know, on the scientific end. And those are people that want to stay here. They're ingrained in this community. We want them to stay here. We want to build a, a, a business here. And we can take advantage of those, of those synergies. That's the long-term vision. Can we get there? Um, we're willing to, to, to see if we can get there. Uh, the other thing is the building, as it's set out, actually has three areas that can be broken down into three distinct areas of production. So you have what I think is the west wing, um, then you have the middle section, and then you have the east side. And all of those have different functions that can be built into what we do and how we can introduce the product into, uh, into the extraction and into the, the cleaning phases for specific uses in the market. And that gives you guys a competitive edge in the community. Hopefully we can get there. Uh, then say this is an emerging market uh, you know, we don't want to oversell this uh, as emerging markets go there's a lot of inefficiencies we've done we've done the heavy lifting by <laughs> you know that, that that old saying my mom used to tell me a, a saying a long time ago she said an education usually costs you time opportunity or money this education has cost us all and we're willing and we're willing to take that education and put it to work in your community uh, so that's that's the last thing uh, I have. If you guys have any questions, I, I, one just came to my, my mind. Uh, do you see yourselves expanding on the 240 acres, perhaps something in New Mexico, or so? No. Uh, he here. says I'm no so, way. Uh, not so we're not growing. <laughs> okay. Here's what I here's what I will add to that. Okay. So um, in the United States, the amount of people who can actually grow a mass farm, uh, something over 500. There's probably 10 to 15 individuals that have that knowledge. And um, because it's an emerging market, a lot of people don't understand the equipment that it takes to bring in a harvest on hand. Remember, the cordage, once it's done, is, is on par with tensile strength, on par with steel. So if you run a combine, I've, I've literally seen combines run into a field 50 feet later. That combine has $100,000 worth of damage. Wow. It's a unique crop. Uh, it takes a unique skill set with unique equipment to bring that in. Uh, and then that's only on the harvesting. So seed depth, uh, 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 pH balances, it goes on and on and sure. on. That knowledge base is very fast. <coughs> we built a business such that we built verticals of expertise and we can advise people. So my point is this, if you know anybody who wants to grow a thousand acres, we can advise them. <laughs> we can tell them how to do it. But I don't think we're gonna do it. <laughs> Sure. But it, 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 it's, uh, it, and that's that equipment, that expertise is coming. It's coming very fast. Uh, one of the other unique things about New Mexico is the soil profile in New Mexico for the Afghanian Kush, <coughs> which is the type of phenotype that you grow for CBD. The type of soil that exists here, if you think about the name Afghani Kush, those are regions that are very similar to New Mexico. New Mexico has a very good profile for growing hemp. It, it's, it's actually unique in the United States at the altitude the temperature, the grow seasons, you get it all here. Obviously you guys have water, so there's a there's another opportunity. <coughs> Thank you for that. Any questions? Any other yeah. questions guys? So Merit Commission, uh, from the standpoint of the city, um, we're, we're excited about the opportunity. We're excited when we talk about, uh, you know, employment opportunities in Radtown. Uh, we want to uh, do our part here. Uh, as we say, we, we want to help them decide in a positive way to uh, locate the facility in Radtown. And so uh, Jessica and Jason have worked on this uh, now extensively. And Jessica is going to report to you on uh, where we're at <coughs> on, on that side of it. But uh, just to let you know, we're, we are doing what we, we reasonably can do to uh, try to uh, assist them in their decision making and bring them to Rat Down. So.
Yeah, so um, just so briefly, I want to back up a bit and tell you the very first time um, I got to meet with the family and meet all partners, they invited me into the house. And one of the very first thing we talked about was transparency, making sure everything is black and white and above the book. That is something that we've talked about since the beginning. So I've been very confident when talking about their growth, growth plans because they've been nothing but transparent to say, we have these intentions, this is what we can promise, and if this happens, we're hoping to do this. Um, and so, you know, we have some great partners. I love to see a family working together. Um, you know, I think that's the backbone of Rat Home. We have strong family businesses, and this is um, one that I'd like to bring into the mix, especially because um, they've talked about the Armex building, what we call the Armex building, and the ability to possibly uh, use this for, um, you know, their business operations. That building has been underutilized for a really long time. And I'm really excited to see that go back to a semi-industrial type um, usage and put one of our assets to use um, as, as this moves forward. So we have met with the New Mexico Ed uh, Economic Development Department. We've met with Mark Roper. We have put in an initial state LIDA ask we are on the second round of information, and um, as Ben had alluded to a few minutes ago, hemp is a priority for the governor, so is rural incentives. So I feel like this was a really great time for us to be able to bring this to our community. Um, you know, when you hired me in November, I was really hoping to land something like this, and it just lined up that something found us through the help of Jason, um, and they have a very quick timeline, and so this could be a really big opportunity for our town. I'm really excited. Um, that they are moving forward with that. So at the next city commission meeting, I will um, anticipate bringing to you an initial LIDA agreement um, on a local level. And on a local level, what we would like to do is do some type of a sliding scale rental agreement. As you all know, the RMX has been underutilized and underloved. So it's going to take huge capital investment that <coughs> they're willing to make in that building in order to move their operations here. And so um, working with them on a sliding scale for the first two to three years and then get that up to a market rate rent is our goal here so that we can help them, um, you know, with some of the cost of redoing that huge roof and uh, making that a clean environment to operate um, up to their quality standards. So I'm working with Mark through that process and um, they've been very helpful and very open to working with us and seeing something come to fruition in Rat Town. So um, the next meeting, I look forward to having something more formal, formal to bring to you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, man. Appreciate it. Again, appreciate you all coming up. Yeah. Thanks for having us here. We're starting to realize that. Neither can we. No, she is a tremendous asset. Tremendous asset. All right. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you guys for coming up and explaining it to us. Yeah, uh, my number, uh, mine and Ben's number, I wrote both part, and that's our cell phone. Okay. Uh, that I left on, on the uh, sheet there. If you guys wake up in a cold sweat wondering about him, give us a call. <laughs> I know this guy answers his phone all the time. I know I do too. And I don't want to short you. Scott has been super, Jason's been super. Uh, their enthusiasm has been just amazing. Uh, I think I'll just leave it there. So thank you. Thank I'm you. Appreciate it. Yeah, some pretty so appreciate the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we look forward to a long <coughs> relationship with you all. Uh, it's been a, I've wanted to bring this business back to New Mexico for a while. Uh, so uh, I would love to do that. Okay. We talked about it, and I mentioned it, but I believe you have a couple of your managers that actually are from Rat and travel back and forth. And so, I know I know you're doing well. We used to do some surveying together over the well. <coughs> so. He brought up a really good point that I would remiss if you to bring it up. You're welcome to come to our plant anytime in Trinidad. Okay. We okay. work Tuesday through Friday. Okay. Uh, we have a little problem today, so we're gonna be working Saturday. <laughs> so TK, his wife, is the plant manager. And uh, Adrian is, a, is one of our plant managers that maintains the equipment. I think you'll be really uh, impressed with the kind of equipment we have that's processing this plant. And uh, we're, we're pretty proud of it. So you, any one of you are welcome. Jason's been there. If anybody else would like to come, any of the commissioners, 
Mayor, Mayor Pro Camp, anybody, please, you're always welcome to come see us. A lot of people talk about it, but they have never seen it in action, right. so this may be a good option. Get to see the employees. We've got, God's blessed us with good people. Cool. Great. Cool. That's, that's outstanding. Yeah. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, if, um, thank you, you all. Guys, uh, it's really boring if you want to stay the rest of the meeting. I'd recommend that you get back on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's not boring. So here's a little fact. This guy suffered a heart attack about uh, uh, eight weeks ago. Oh, okay. Remember yeah. at 12. So, That's why I'm a little short breath. So I'm going to, he has a, he had a double bypass stint. So I'm going to get him back home uh, if that's okay with you guys. So absolutely. That's sure. Absolutely. Right. And stay well. I, I, yeah. I really appreciate you showing up there. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, That's giving me a second chance. Absolutely. Thank you very much for taking it. Is it, is it etiquette to shake hands now? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I, don't care. I have a bur I, I ate a burger before. I can't We're all right. Thank you for making the trip up. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You too. Sure have a safe trip, trip back. I know. Can you her? No. So we're not cousins. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Lots of support. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll tell you. Yeah, be careful. He's been a challenge. Ben, thank you so much for coming up. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Yes. Nice meeting you. Nice to have some positive energy around here, isn't it? Outstanding. Okay, item C. I guess we'll move on here. Deliberate and act on personnel board appointments. Mayor and Commission on uh, the table. Hopefully, you find or you found in your box. Three applications for uh, the Raton Personnel Board. Now, you have the application of Lance Romero, Carrie Medina, and Terry Baca. They are uh, all three existing members of the Personnel Board, have served since uh, 2016, and we bring these three to you for reappointment to the Personnel Board. Any uh, questions for Mr. Barry? Comments? Yeah, they're all very qualified. Absolutely. I'd make a motion that we uh, appoint these three gentlemen to the board. That's good. All right. All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item D, deliberate and act on resolution 2020-05 fiscal year 22nd quarter financial reports. Mr. Berry. Mayor Commission, in your package, you do see the uh, financial report and the resolution 2020-05. Um, I will try to go through the uh, report briefly for you. Um, and typically, Michael Ann would uh, uh, talk about the general fund ending cash. You can see that. Uh, with the uh, one twelfth reserve subtracted, we have available cash in the general fund about two point one million dollars. Uh, so we are in good shape there. We are seeing some expenses coming our way in uh, twenty twenty. So we will talk about that. Um, but uh, as far as reserves, good shape. Um, you'll see from the recap of the revenue side. Uh, down below that, that we are currently a little over three percent, three and a third percent above our year-to-date budget projections, uh, which that's good, and uh, we do that really by holding expenses <coughs> as, as well. But the revenue side is 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 good compared to year-to-date budget projection. I think the uh, bad news then would be on the next page when we look at the uh, monthly. Receipts, and we see that trend that we've talked about before. It's really held over the last 18 months, uh, where we're seeing a, a steady 10% decline in GRT when compared to the same month, say three years ago or back beyond that. And so we really don't have an explanation for that. That is a pretty consistent number, and we've had to adjust to that uh, lower revenue. So while we're over the the uh, the projection for the year, uh, when you look back a couple of years, we actually have have lost a little bit of ground. Uh, there are some revenue uh, items out there. Uh, 
uh, coming that we think will be positive. Of course, the best thing that we can do is really build the tax base here locally, uh, provide jobs, see businesses, and see private employment come into town. And that's why uh, we're excited about the item that we talked about before. That's, that's the best thing we can do to bolster uh, that number. Uh, but there are some other things we talked about. Uh, online sales, uh, uh, sales tax or GRT from online sales, um, the sharing of compensating taxes, those, those couple of things. Uh, should help us as we go along. And so um, that is, I think, kind of the highlights of the financial report. I'll hold up there and answer any questions that you might have. Questions for Mr. Barry. Second. A motion and a second to approve resolution 2020 The approval of the second quarter financial reports. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And Robin, will we need to sign this up? I'm it? sorry? Will we need to sign this Yes, up? I have that here for you. Just to remind you. Oh, did you? You want to talk to me. Item E, deliberate and act on resolution 2020-06, budget adjustment number six. Mr. Mayor, Commission, this is uh, budget number six for fiscal year of 20, and we have a couple of items on this uh, uh, budget adjustment resolution. Uh, so first of all, we're talking about the comprehensive plan. Um, we will have a kickoff meeting here Thursday morning to begin uh, the comprehensive plan. We talked about that before. The, the uh, comprehensive plan was updated last time in 2003. Uh, it, it is mentioned that you would do that every five years. We're, of course, well past that, um, but uh, we will start that uh, now. Now we had, if you look at your bar, we had budgeted 25,000 for that process, anticipating a $50,000 uh, um, total cost uh, for doing that. And the balance coming from New Mexico Finance Authority. Uh, we did ask New Mexico Finance Authority to fund half of the, the uh, project. They did a financial analysis on Raton and said, they would fund the entire $50,000 amount. So what you see on the bar is that uh, we'll have to upfront the money, but that will be fully reimbursed. Now, there is some additional work, uh, specifically uh, up updating of our zoning map that is not reflected in the $50,000. That would be an additional cost. We'll pay for that out of our $25,000 budget. Uh, so to give you the true picture, uh, there will be that additional cost. Uh, that's the one thing I can think of as a zoning map. Um, and then if you look right below that, we talked about an affordable housing plan. So uh, that's a separate uh, plan. It's moving on basically the same schedule. Um, and how that worked is the New Mexico uh, Mortgage Finance Authority has offered us uh, grant funds to do the affordable housing <coughs> plan. It's really a regional uh uh, affordable housing plan for Colfax County. So Colfax County is the lead agency uh, in this uh, item. The city of Raton has previously agreed to provide $40,000 of funding uh, for this. The total project there is $48,000. So you don't see that there because what we're doing is just uh, reimbursing the county $4,000 for our share. Um, moving down, you see some activity on the railroad depot. Um, we have had our engineers prepare a site plan for improvements to the railroad depot. You'll recall that uh, we have a little over $200,000 in funds from Federal Highway Administration um, for this project. Um, that will accomplish improvements to the parking area and drainage. Um, and so the engineers are putting some uh, final touches on revisions to that plan. And our next step will be, we'll have to get clearance from State Historic Preservation Division, also from Federal Highway Administration. I plan on working on that the next couple of weeks uh, and then uh, proceed along with the bid package at request bids and try to do that construction uh, when we get into warm months. So the uh, activity that you see here um, is for engineering costs we will have to upfront all of that construction cost 
and then reimburse that when we get the, the funding back from Federal Highway. So we'll see more activity on that as we go. That's all I have on this uh, this item, Mayor. Right, thank you. Finished, but I just started that affordable housing. Is that what Monica Beta is working on with North Central, or is this something else? That is, uh, they will probably, North Central will probably uh, act as the contractor, in my understanding, uh, on this project. So they will they will be directly involved. Okay. Thank you. Any other motion? I'll second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2020-06. VAR number six. All in favor of vote by the sign of aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item F. City Manager's Report, Mr. Barry. Mayor Commission, I'll start off by saying that the uh, Raton Planning and Zoning Commission had met last week. Uh, they worked on, uh, they heard a request for uh, rezoning of a parcel. Um, we do have some folks here, I think, that uh, have some interest uh, in the uh, in that zoning procedure. Uh, where we're at is we will uh, have to post the, a, a public hearing for that. Um, there's a requirement in the ordinance that we would notify property owners by mail of the public hearing and the times are really uh, dictated in the uh, uh, in the ordinance and so when we can make that uh, that public notice uh, get those notices mailed out post the property we'll schedule that public hearing uh, here in front of the commission um, and so that's coming up I'm not sure whether that'll be the next meeting or the following meeting, we'll find out and we'll notify uh, all of the interested parties. But you did see we, a, a, a member of planning and zoning here tonight, and I think that's in preparation of that uh, public hearing coming up. Um, I will move along and tell you that I met with our state legislative delegation last week in a trip to the legislature. Uh, we submitted the city of Raton request for capital outlay submitted four requests number one and they're the requests that we talked about uh here back in november and the commission had approved uh we talked about number one the purchase of police vehicles uh we asked for three hundred thousand dollars we anticipate we could uh replace eight eight of our uh, police cruisers uh with that amount of money number two we talked about asphalt recycling and street resurfacing that's the process where we take asphalt millings rejuvenate those and use them for surfacing um, we asked for five hundred thousand dollars for that project uh, we asked for storm drainage improvements in the original town site of raton uh, two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars and then lastly we asked for funding for an economic development spec building uh, really get out in front of opportunities like we heard here tonight where uh, if you have a building in place and the opportunity comes along uh, it, it might work for you if you have to wait to get a building funded and, and get it up you have very well probably lost your opportunity there uh, we are asking the legislature to look at that item in the amount of seven hundred thousand uh, dollars we're one week into the legislative session 30-day session, so uh, I imagine that that will move along fairly quickly, and uh, I would guess that in a couple of weeks we'll get an idea of uh, how the uh, capital outlay funding is shaping up. So I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, I did attend a Northeast Regional Transportation Planning Organization meeting in Santa Fe. Uh, well, I was down there. The, the uh, DOT had presented their schedule in their new process, the call for projects. That's, you'll recall uh, a, a new program that they came up with last year where you get the majority or, or nearly all and possibly all of the funding for a larger size project, a municipal project. They laid out the schedule. Uh, Jason and myself, staff will work on uh, getting uh, all of the materials together for a, a submittal and the uh, call for projects. Uh, we were turned down last year, but we have some optimism that we would be in good standing uh, to request funding this year. So we'll be working on that. Um, I did, I did uh, go back to a project that we've talked about in the past. I'm working with Retha Shiplett on an update of our 
city personnel policy manual. So I'd like to uh, get uh, some review on that done and get that to the commission. It's probably going to be a matter of a couple of months by the time we do the process and bring that to the commission. But to let you know we're working on that, that's going to require some sections uh, to have legal review and, and some review of uh, risk management as well. So I'll be working on, on that with Retha and uh, uh, then some other parties. Um, we talked about Municipal Day. Uh, I think the importance of Municipal Day on the 6th and 7th is uh, the Municipal League will talk about, uh, number one, the uh, uh, activities regarding state budget and some of the funding things that we're interested in. Um, that's typically what a 30-day session would be limited to. However, there is some legislation outside of financial issues that uh, has come up as well as the mayor had indicated. I think there's uh, uh, about three or four pieces of legislation that are very important to the city of Raton that we'll be tracking. Uh, and at this session on the 7th, uh, we'll get a good indication from Municipal League about um, where that's going. At that point, there won't be much of time left on the clock and we'll know uh, where that uh, that proposed legislation is at and and see how it might impact us. Right now, it's a little too early to call, but uh, we'll keep you posted on the progress of that. But uh, of course, that's a good opportunity for you all to, to hear that from people that really follow it on a daily basis. Um, we talked about the Railroad Depot. Uh, I think that by the time we get through those reviews that we talked about, uh, we would be looking at a warm weather construction process, but I don't have a bid date on that yet. I'll keep you posted on that. Um, just to follow up on an item that we had talked about before, uh, we, we heard from uh, people in town in a couple of different areas. We had an idea uh, about uh, looking at Rio Grande Avenue maybe adding some signalization. Uh, we had a suggestion that we look at it as a one-way street, um, and we have followed up on that. We've also heard from citizens uh, that live on the frontage road along I-25 between the Clayton Road and Highway 72, um, and we have looked at that as well. So what we've completed here is a traffic safety evaluation report uh, for the frontage road, East 10th and Rio Grande Avenue. We're studying the findings of this report uh, right now. Um, we'll, I'll, I'll share some more actions with you when we propose actions. I think at a minimum, we're looking at uh, increased signage. We would look seriously at the uh, uh, one-way direction on Rio Grande. And of course, there would be particular signage and pavement markings that would go with that. <coughs> so we'll uh, uh, also probably schedule a, a, a meeting with the people that have come forward and try to report to them on the findings of the report, answer any questions that they've got. Uh, but I, there will be an implementation phase on both of those that will follow up this year. Um, we are reviewing plans and specs right now for a project at the airport, something that we've talked about before. Uh, installation of the Precision Approach Plane Indicator Equipment, that's uh, shortened to a PAPI. Uh, we're also doing some runway lighting uh, improvements uh, with that. Um, so we're looking that over now. We'll need to go through a review process with Federal Aviation Administration. I don't have a good idea of how long their review will take on that project. Um, so I don't have a date of when we might bid it, but as soon as we get approval from FAA or they come up with revisions and we complete the revisions, uh, we'll be bidding that project. So again, uh, in uh, the summer months of 2020, we anticipate construction of that project. Um, and then um, that's all I have, Mayor. End of the list. All righty, thank you. Any comments or questions for Mr. Barry? I'm here. All righty. Mr. Barry, we will be leaving uh, on the 7th. I'm going to be with you down on the 7th. Yes, Mr. Okay. Sure. Any other questions, comments? Item G, closes executive session pursuant to 10-15-1H5, collective bargaining between the City of Raton and Raton Police Officers Association. We will need a motion to go into executive session. So I make a motion to move. 
I have a motion and a second. All in favor, vote by the panel. Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in closed session. Thank you. Why don't you stay with us? I'm sorry? Why don't you stay with us? Okay. Okay. They won't take it. Take your pick. Oh, okay. <laughs> Giacomo made the motion. Schuster seconded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can, can we run to the... Oh, yeah. <laughs>